Hey guys, Calvin Nation here with another video for you. And in today's video, we're going to be reviewing this guy right here. This is the Orange Rescue Blade in Gen 1. This is a UK pen knife. And I got this yesterday. It's a really cool little knife. Like I said, it's a UK PK, so it's legal in the UK. Obviously, it's legal here. If anything's legal in the UK, it's going to be legal here as well. Um, but this blade is just kind of a cool little blade. Obviously, I don't need the whole non-locking knife deal. But uh, it was cheap. It was only $29 on Warriors and Wonders as a little special. I think there's a few left. But uh, yeah, I just decided to get it kind of just on a whim. Um, but yeah, there's the knife with all its other orange brothers there. Those are kind of all my orange spideys that I have. Hopefully I'll be getting more soon. Also, there's your dodo that I need to get a review on shortly. So hopefully that will come out soon. Um, probably in August because I'll be camping could be happening next week though. I do have some days back home I think next week. But there's all the orange spideys. Let's start with the review. So hopefully I'll play you guys some pictures here that I took of this uh, because I'm going to be reading a little summary like I sometimes do of the actual knife. It's not so much of this particular knife. It's almost more of kind of a philosophy of use behind UK PKs as well as rescue knives. So. I'll play you guys some pictures while I read this. Spyderco is the first to make a clip carry one handed open non locking folder. Stepping out of an accepted knife making standards, we recognize the global trend leading to high performance knives that don't lock. This is a synthesis of modern and traditional, creating a socially friendly and internationally accepted slip in your pocket knife for city and country carry. Round tipped sheep's foot blades are specialty sought by emergency responders, ranchers, and river guides. Having no pointed tip lowers the chance of piercing slash puncturing what you're cutting, whether that is inflatable watercraft, livestock, or people, a cardinal piece of emergency cutting rescue equipment. Sheep's foot blades slip under clothing, rope, and bindings for safeguarded cutting without sharp tip worries. Our new rescue pen knife blade is held open by a notch joint at the knife's pivot. When closing the blade, the notch produces resistance functionally similar to a traditional slip joint pen knife. To achieve heightened control, safety, and comfort, Spyderco designers add a deep finger choil positioning the index finger on the bottom of the blade directly under your thumb. This lets you choke up nearer to the cutting edge with comfort and dexterity. The handle is available in Safety Orange uh, FRN with a tension wire clip that carries deeply in the pocket, tip up and either left or right handed. The Gin 1 laser cut blade is available in the Spider Edge um, hollow ground blade. So that's what Spider Co. has to say about the knife. So let's get started here. Uh, like they say, it is a nice kind of sheep's foot blade that offers uh, very easy control around objects that you don't want damaged um, when you're cutting stuff like bindings, rope, or, or stuff around people, even um, uh, like seat belts, stuff like that. So it offers good control in a safety situation. You also have serrations, so once you get under that object you're going to cut, it's just going to slice right through that very easy. And also with that straight edge, all that pressure is just right on the serrations there. Um, this is hollow ground. Like I said, you can kind of see there. Hollow grind just looks beautiful. And it also is in Gin 1 steel. Also, like I said, um, I'm not totally sure what the steel's about. I'm sure most of you guys don't totally know either. It's I think it's an older steel that they kind of stopped using for a while. Um, I don't know how old this knife is even. I think this was kind of like the first run of these knives. I think it is actually discontinued. And then I think they moved it on to S30V in G10, actually. But I think, as far as I know, the Gen 1 is a medium quality steel, probably similar to... 8CR13 MOV I think is probably better. Uh, I think it holds the edge a bit longer probably. Um, I heard it's pretty easy to sharpen, holds the edge for a medium length. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't know the rust resistance, but I think it's uh, I think it's pretty rust resistant. I mean, a typical uh, similar steel to 8CR13 MOV type of thing. Same uh, similar rust resistance as that, I believe. It does have a different look to it though, almost a stonewashed look as you can see. I don't know if that's just the finish they put on it, or if it's the actual steel giving off that kind of finish, but uh, I really like it. 
you can see, let's take uh, your typical kind of S30V if it will focus. You can see it's got kind of a different shine to it. It's more almost uh, kind of pearlescent, whereas the uh, S30V looks a bit more kind of brushed, more satiny. But uh, it's a nice change. I really like that. I think it's kind of similar looking as uh, steels like N690, that type of thing. Uh, but that's a very nice looking blade at least. Also, you have that thumb hole. Let's see what the diameter is on that. The diameter is always kind of a useless spec, but whatever. Um, they don't even have it. Whatever. <laughs> it's not important anyway. But uh, it does offer one-handed opening. And you can actually flick this open, which I didn't think it was possible um, because of how tight they kind of have to make it for uh, legality issues and stuff. But um, it is actually able to be opened fast. It's a little hard. You have to give a little bit of a wrist flick. Another reason why I didn't think it was possible because in every review I've seen of these tub of knives, people always just kind of open it like that or just open it like that. Um, but let's see if I can kind of whip it open there. Yeah, there you go. So you can whip it open, which is nice. So it gives you the feel of a locking folder, but it doesn't lock, as you can see here. Uh, the way I kind of like to unlock it is just kind of dip it onto that finger where the choil is, and then just kind of pop it closed. So, yeah, there you go. Also, it locks, or sorry, not locks, but it stops halfway. You can kind of see that. It locks or stops there. Um, just in case it does happen to to kind of break on you with, and uh, your finger may not be in that choil there. If it's not, it should kind of stop there before it hits you. So that's a good little, another safety feature. Um, but uh, yeah, there's the kind of uh, the way it works. I'm not totally sure how it keeps tension on that kind of in the open position. They did kind of mention, I wonder if it kind of works similar. Yeah, I think it just works very similar to a back lock. There's a small notch in the blade tang there, and then obviously kind of in this locking bar, it uh, kind of lands in that hole. But uh, unlike the uh, the lockback knives, it doesn't go deep into that hole, and it's probably also kind of curved at the, uh, the end of it, so as you put pressure on it after a certain while, kind of like a detent ball, it pops out. So that's kind of how that... Uh, locking mechanism works. It kind of semi-locks in an open position, uh, but is obviously technically still legal. Also, the blade length on this for you UK guys is 2.938 inches, which could be 2 and 15, 16 inches. I don't know, but um, your cutting edge has to be below 3, and <laughs> it's really close to 3, which is so cool of Spyderco. I love when companies really pay attention to um, a smaller kind of community within a knife community, um, like people in UK, how they can't have locking knives over three inches, or any knives over three inches um, locking or not locking. So that's really cool that they uh, pay attention to that crowd and give them a knife that's just borderline uh, legal, which is really cool. So let's keep going. We got orange FRN scales on this one, no stainless steel liners. Nice hardware there, it's got a good polish to them. Please focus. There's your spider. And I really like how they do it on the UK pen knives. I think I definitely like it over the, uh, I forget what they call that, the volcanic pattern or something. I like that over, uh, I like this one over that because it gives it more of a G10 look, which I definitely like. Um, gives it more kind of high quality, uh, not as almost cheesy looking um, style. But there you go, there you can kind of see the back spacer. Actually does it have a, oh no that's just a small little hair, at first I thought there was nested uh, steel liners. You can see back here there is a little FRN spacer uh, that I think is totally cast in there. I'm not sure if it's, yeah I think it's cast along with both of the uh, the handles here. But there you go, uh, there's that steel. It almost looks like the steel is the same. Uh, it could be Gen 1 back here, I'm not sure. It'd be kind of strange, but it has the same exact finish. And again, like I said, this Gen 1, that might not actually be the finish it always takes. It just might be kind of the way Spyderco 
finished all the steel on this knife. Um, they might have given it a little bit of a, a wash and something. But it comes with this Spyderco tension wire clip, as usual. It's got a very, very deep carry, which I love. Uh, I'll show you that quickly, actually. Why not? Let's see if we can spin this around. There's the carry. Can we focus in on that? So it's very, very deep, as you can see there, uh, which also adds to um, the legality, I guess. Makes it so it's not um, aggressive looking, just kind of looks like a pen or something. Also called a pen knife, coincidentally. And uh, yeah, really deep carry. And you can open that nice and fast, non-locking, very beautiful knife. So, I guess there's your review. I guess I can't really say too much more on the subject. Um, this, this review didn't seem totally great, if you ask me. Sorry for that. I don't know. I'm out of it today. But there's a review on the Spyderco Rescue Gen 1 UKPK pen knife. So thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the pictures. I used a little bit different techniques on these pictures. I really enjoy walking out there and taking pictures of each knife I get. One of the funnest things about making reviews. Um, but yeah, there you go. Specs will be in the description. Forgot to say that. And um, that's the review for you. So thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I will see you for the next one. Toodles!